yeah so so functions by now like you should know that they help us with testability like we can test programs and the importance of that is well i mean we're producing good code and if you produce good code then you can remain employed <laughs> yeah. well right that's like the whole purpose of like creating unit tests when i when i uh i mean unit test cases have been around since like the 70s but i don't think there was a big push uh to use them by a lot of universities or, or scholars right I, i'm not sure why like they focus more like on the computer science piece of it right because programming in this class i have to balance between like computer science meaning like how is stuff working and then programming like teach you how to program uh, but i think that uh in teaching you how to program a lot of a lot of them don't teach testing which is very important like uh anywhere in austin if you want a job they'll ask you about unit test like if you don't know unit test then then they'll just kind of like put your paper to the side right your resume or up to the side but if you demonstrate that that you've done that and at a community college then right away that puts you like to the forefront which is what we want right so and then functions help us break down programs right i showed you that simple menu program but like uh, as a newbie like my son says right <laughs> uh in programming you you i ask you to write a menu you start in main and the main that py file just writing like the the print statements and then you're like okay i have a print statement okay let me do the loop okay let me capture some input from the user so you just want to do it all like in 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 the big bang theory but with functions we can start thinking like steps we're like okay i need to display the menu okay so let me create a display menu function i need to run the function okay let me create the run menu okay and then as we were going i was talking um, in the previous lecture and we're like okay we need a way to i mean we can write the code to handle what the user gives us but it's better if we put it in another function like the user gives us some number we feed it into the function and then the function takes care of option 1 2 or 3 right so that's what functions give us they give us the ability to break down programs um, into modules right so modularly modularly programs so and uh, when we get into classes in the next couple of weeks then you'll see how that also gives us the same ability that functions do but it solves a lot of the a lot of the issues that we might uh, encounter with functions right so anytime you want a function to do something you need function arguments meaning you need to send something into the function and if you have a lot of functions then you're passing a lot of data around we make there's a lot of opportunities to make mistakes right so classes they'll try to help us with that uh, we'll talk about like the function scope uh, that's what got me in trouble right like variables that are in the function you know how do they how can we use them can we use them inside and outside the function or only inside the function and then why is that and we'll show with a simple memory diagram we won't get too crazy with memory and uh <clears throat> we know about value return functions we've been using them like sin since the beginning of the semester and then we know about function modules which are the where you write the functions so those are function modules those are user defined modules uh, in this chapter 5 the book introduces us to the math module if you uh went over the book they talk about the math module and there's like a random number generator and again somebody wrote code that generates a random number and we can just call that function and use it right so that's what we're going to cover uh, we'll go slow because uh, understanding functions is actually like very important and we'll be i'll be drawing some simple memory diagrams so hopefully everyone understands like what happens when function when programs are running they'll make you like a better programming and that's like the computer science piece of the course okay so a void function uh, let me see here what's this 1336 right 1336 
Okay, examples. So void function. So usually, like, I'll, I'll go with what the book might do, right? When the book is introducing us to something, like, for example, hello world, then they ask you type this and then run it, like a print statement that outputs hello world. Let me clear some of this stuff. And we can run it. And then it's like, ooh, ooh, hello world, right? But the reality is that we don't usually like do stuff like this. And we want to start using functions, so then we can uh, do something like this, like first program. And then we can say print hello world in a function. <clears throat> we can go back to main. And we have to remember to import the void functions. Now we have to call, right? So we say void functions dot first program. So we import the module, line two. We call the module's first program function. And we should be able to run this program. And uh, it should say, well, actually, let me see, uh, print hello world. Mm. Let me think here. Uh, first program. This is what's bugging me. Let me think what happened here. Let me, hold on, let me test something. Clear. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, embedded print. Uh, and you know what? This is something I always do in Python only, not in C++. Okay. Uh, thanks, Lee. So we go back here, right? So they embedded. Yeah, so it got confused. <clears throat> so now, hello world, right? So, so this is getting us into like, okay, so when I go out there, then we're working with functions. We usually never write anything in main that's not a function. From main we call a function and that function calls other functions and those functions will call other functions and our program will run, right? So if you see uh, programs, they'll always have like a small main piece, but all the logic is encapsulated or hidden in functions, right? So, so that, I mean, <clears throat> what are uh, void functions used for? usually like to display information like we might get a list of something here pass it in and display like to screen or maybe send the list of records to file or to a database or send them over uh, the network you know to share space or to another computer right so usually that's what uh, they're used for and <clears throat> the return the value return functions uh, we know they can process data and give us something back, right? Like we perform uh, arithmetic operations, uh, we might perform string manipulation, stuff like that, right? So, so it's usually like you can think of it as something goes into a black box and something comes back. And uh, any questions on the on the void functions? Like really, that's that's as far as I wanted to go on the void functions because I mean usually you display stuff, right? And like we can make this like like maybe name, right? And we're like, okay, so let's introduce a function parameter or argument. And then here we can say uh, something like that, Joe. And then we can say uh, instead of hello world, we can say hello. Uh, and then something like that right so hello someone's name and then we can say hello joe right or uh if we wanted uh, to get some input then we can say name equals enter name and instead of sending this literal value then we send in the value of whatever we get from the keyboard. Right? So we run this, 
And I'll still type Joe, but now we are getting it from the keyboard and now it's saying hello Joe, right? So these concepts, like hopefully by now you're very comfortable with them for function. The function is here and it's just waiting to be executed or called, right? And we we have one rule to follow here and it's we have to send it a variable because we created that parameter meaning like we are expecting if you want to use first program then you need to send me something and we'll display it right? so that's all we're doing here okay so we have this so what is happening in the computer's memory right so i know that I'm pretty sure you haven't thought about this, right? So I'll go here. Let me go to uh, 1337 because I don't want to draw the picture. It's already drawn here. So so we have, assuming this is memory, this block right here, this block right here is computer memory. And then this small blocks here, like OneNote, that's an application, this program that I'm using. Visual Studio Code. We might have the Chrome browser open. And then I just ran that Hello World program. So notice these blocks mean each of those programs gets their own memory from the computer's available memory, right? So uh, where's my pen? So so this one right here is available memory. Again, this is high level. Okay, so. And then uh, this one here is programs memory. And then if we follow this over here and we get them, we zoom into the memory, then all of these blocks of memory here that we see on the left more or less have memory that's represented like this. There's something known as the stack which is kind of like where everything happens. And we'll show you what's happening with the program that I just wrote. And then there's free or heap memory, which Python doesn't allow us to use explicitly, but Python will use it behind the scenes. C++ allows us to use this memory. That's all I'll say about that. A literal memory. So recall that I, so for example, this here, they're literals, right? Um, they're stored here because anything that's loaded onto a, pro a memory in a program has to be in memory somewhere, right? So, so there would be like a memory slot for for uh, enter name right here, and then static we don't have to worry about it, and then our code is also has to be loaded onto memory somehow, right? So it gets its block of memory and then global variables. Now let's zoom in to stack memory, right? Because that's where everything happens in a program. So we go back to our 1336 and uh, we'll create Okay, and we we want to know what happens when this program runs right here, when this program right here runs. So I'll copy the code Okay, so we have the stack memory, and then we have memory blocks. This is a memory block, this is a memory block, this is a memory block, this is a memory block. Okay, so this variable right here has to go somewhere in memory. So It'll go here, but some values will go there, okay? And then we are like saying, well, what else is loaded onto memory? Well, when Python runs, it somehow it has to keep track of how it's running, right? So I'm pretty sure that it has some kind of main function behind the scenes that we don't see, right? When it starts running, then something has to be loaded onto memory, and it's probably a main function that we don't see. And this main block of memory will store 
values that are here, right? For example, name. So name goes into main memory. But we have another function here, first program. So first program starts running or executing. It will get its own block of memory. First program. And actually, these diagrams are important because you'll see why uh, function variables or variables inside the functions don't change it variables that are outside the function or why we can go into the function from main and change a variable in the function. We'll see an example. So we say uh, name, right? So then notice here there's a parameter name, so there'll be a name parameter here too. So notice we have a block for name. Which name? This name. And then we have another block for name here which is for this name, and they are in different frames, right? So this is the main frame, and this is the first program frame or block of memory. So that's an first program will be in memory for an instance. Like, it's loaded onto memory. It comes here. It's like, OK, name is Joe. Print hello, Joe. And once it prints, it starts unloading from the stack. So once it unloads, then it st starts, it's here, right? And then this one is removed from the stack. And these memory blocks are free for our program to use again. And then we don't have anything else. So then it'll start, it'll eventually go here. And it's like, oh, I need to start exiting. And then Python's like, oh, I, I have to remove main frame from the memory and then our program is not no longer in memory right so that's like a high level of what's happening when our program's running and why am i going over, going over this because this is important to understand the next topics that we'll cover which are uh local variables and function arguments right so i already kind of showed you what happens to function arguments in memory right? so we go here right so this is a function argument and in memory it gets its own block of memory. And notice name, which is a variable in main, gets its own block of memory. Even though they have the same name, Python sees them as two different variables. And we'll prove that with test cases, that they're different. Okay. Any questions? Well, for a beginner programmer, it will be confusing. But like for experienced programmers, they know like the scope. They know that that it's different, right? Yeah. So let me see here. Uh, let me look at. Oops. Let me look at the next topic. Local variables, right? So so let's write a function, but not void function. We'll go with value return, mainly because we want to test it. So we'll say uh, def, and we'll call it local uh, variable, I guess, right? So local variable. We'll start with no parameters. And then we will, we will say, uh, value equals zero, okay? And uh, and the book started using like a main function. So we'll use a main function too. And we'll say, okay, call local variable. Oops, not that. <laughs> okay. So now in main, in the main.py file, I will uh, remove this for now. I'll say void function dot. Let me see. Uh, maybe I can't. Oh, I should be able to. Did I save it? I'm not sure if it's reserved. Let's see. Void functions. I guess main is reserved. 
that's strange. Or did they do, do this? I think they did this main. And then uh, I just do that. So import import void functions. So notice I create main and then I'm calling main. I think I remember that's. Oh. Marshall, right? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so I was freaking out. So there we go. So. Okay, so that still would have worked, but I would have to do the import value return. So notice now, like we are explicitly creating a main, right? So we want to keep everything in functions. So let's walk through this. Value return functions main. It goes and looks for main, it finds main, and then it's like, oh, you want to call local variable? Okay, let me call local variable, and then we do this. Let me do something here. Let me say value equals zero. On purpose, I'm creating another variable named val with the same name, but mainly for diagramming purposes, right? So we go here, and we're like, okay, let's diagram this. Actually, before we diagram it, let's now say local variable value equals zero, and then we say uh, return val. Okay, return val. No, no, let me not do that. Let me diagram this first. I think if we go, I could probably do that with a programming two class, but not with a programming one class. So I'll start small, okay? And then we'll go back to that one. Local variables. Okay, so let's diagram this and uh, hopefully you all can help me here, okay? And assuming that uh, this is the main uh, file and in the main file we call, uh, what was it? Uh, let me go ahead and copy the code. Uh, we call this piece of code, okay? Okay, so we start here and we have our stack. And we're like, okay, let's see that one, right? So then we're like, okay, so main is loaded onto memory stack, okay? And then we, we inspect main. What's in main? We're like, oh, I see a val, right? So then let's, so zero, right? And I'll put the name here so that we know what it is, val, zero. And then it calls another function, local variable. So let's go ahead and see what happens to this one. It'll get its own memory block. Echo. I'll just put var. And it gets its own memory. And then we inspect that function. And we see val equals 0. So will, it, will we use this val, or, we need to, or do we need to create a new val? We have to create a new val, right? So let's do that. So then this one is here. Its value is still 0. But the important concept here is that they are in two different regions of memory. So they are different variables. OK. And now what I'll do is I'll go here. So any questions here before we, we're going to keep on expanding this drawing. It's uh, understandable. Yeah. This stuff on the left is, is in the processor. This right here? Yeah. Yeah, so where is it? It's just in the processor meaning in memory? Or? Oh, okay. In memory, yeah. So, so we're assuming like since I mean, we're drawing a picture, right? So, so main is loaded, and then a, a variable or local variable. Okay, so so this one should be uh, local, not echo. Local variable. Okay. 
Okay, so everything is clear. We understand that when we put these little curly braces here, we're, we're trying to see memory, the computer's memory. That's what we're trying to diagram. Okay, so that's why we do this. Okay, we go back to our code, and then we're like, okay, so now I want to create another val variable here. And uh, I think this one qualifies as a global variable, right, in Python, which will have its own memory, but maybe in a different block somewhere over here. But the point is we have another variable named val, but now we have three different ones because they are in three different scopes or regions of memory or of our program, right? So that's, and then we'll complicate it one more time, and that's it. <laughs> uh, actually, two more times, right? So now we'll say, well, I need a val variable, but we will see that this is not the same as this one. So now we're like, okay, main, we're in the main piece, and main has a value or a val parameter. So we're like, okay, in here, let's go find uh, main. So we're like, okay, so we found main. And I think in this one we will get in trouble, right? Because we have val here and val here. So so now like the computer will probably complain to us. So maybe we need to make this one val zero. And then this one val uh, zero and this one val zero. Okay, so then we go here. Where would we? So that one, that piece of. Okay, hold on. The question is, where in the diagram does that fit into? Val zero equals zero, and then we call val zero. So this one, where in the diagram do you think we should put it? In the main block or in the local variable block? Like here in this main block or in this block? In main, right? Because, well, it's okay, like we're learning, right? So the, the key is here, right? We're calling the main function. So meaning, oh, this parameter belongs to main. So if it belongs to main, then it's going to be in the memory block that belongs to main. So somewhere, somewhere in here, and it depends on which uh, compiler we're using, right? Let me see which, um, pick a different color. So this one, we'll go somewhere in there. Uh, precisely, well, we don't know, right? Because we can't peek into the computer, but this would be uh, val zero and the value will be zero. And then we go one more time and we expand this one now and we're like, okay, so let's uh, make this one val zero also. And now we're like, okay, this one is expecting a variable. So then we say val zero. And then we have to go modify our code in the diagram. So this one, Find us an enemy. Okay, let me go in there. So num, I mean val zero, and then this one, we need to make sure we send in a parameter, right? So now the question is, this val zero, where do we diagram it? In local, right? Because we're about to call local variable memory. This one. So it needs to go in here. So then that one will go somewhere in there. Val zero, whatever value, because all the values are zero, so it should be zero. The important thing to, to understand here is 
get an understanding of what's happening to variables uh, that live in the function, uh, parameters, and global variables when we're running programs. And if we understand this, then we'll create less uh, logic errors when we're coding, or we won't. Sometimes, like when I was trying to create that program last week, and I'm like, hey, this isn't working, and then I'm like, oh, it's variable scope. Right? It's very easy to like make mistakes with variable scope. So that's a diagram, but now we need to prove it with test cases, right? And how do we prove stuff like this? So we don't have return values, but we can say, well, maybe we need return values, right? So we'll say uh, return val here, and we'll start testing this guy here. Okay, we'll test this guy, and uh, we need to create a test case. So let's go here. So now when you're passing a parameter val zero, uh, val zero, I'll say uh, val zero here. How's that? Okay. Yeah. And then we return val one. Yeah, that should that should be good enough to test. Okay, so test we're in functions, right? So okay, so right here we're like okay uh, def test local variable, and the question is well what do we want to test, right? So let's go back and look at the code. Like we always need to know what we want to test. So okay, let's go the easy route. Will it return value that I send it in? Right. So we're like okay. So self dot assert equal. If we send it ten, then it better return a ten. How do we know that? Well, we wrote the code and we're saying value 10, value 0, set val equals value 0, return val. Okay, so whatever value we send in, it should send back to us. So this is a good test. Uh, now we need to go into uh, run tests. Uh, examples. E functions. Functions, functions, okay. And let's see what happens. So we're good, right? So we passed, the test passed, meaning, okay, so if I send it a value, it sends me the value back. That's okay. Uh, that's good. So now we're like, okay, let's, let's make it more interesting. Let's go to another test case. Uh, local variable, what should we name this one? Uh, scope. Okay, so we create val zero here and we give it the value zero. And then Let me think here. Uh, yeah, uh, thinking here. So then we call it and uh, we want to know what happens if Let me think here. The way this code is structured will give us issues. Okay, so I need to remove that, and then I'll say val zero. Okay, because that'll that'll allow me to uh, test what I want to test. So then we say, okay, what if we say val zero equals ten? Actually, the other way would have worked too. Sorry. Let me keep it how we had it. First, I'll assign it, and then on purpose, I'll be like, well, I want to change this one to maybe 100, just some value. Right? Will this still work? The first test case, will it still work? So let's look at the, the function. We're saying val0, assign val0 to val1, return val1. 
So it should still work. Now on purpose, I'm modifying val0. And what I want to test is, is this val0 here, this val0 in here. From the diagrams, we know it's not. But we want to prove it with a test case, right? So we're like, OK, so, <clears throat> so to prove it, we need to make sure that this is 0 after we call local variable with the value 10. Actually, uh, we call the function here, and then we say val 0 should still be equal to 0 after we call the function. So notice we're not using the function in the test case here, because it has nothing to do with the test case in this case. We're creating val 0 here, and then we're saying call the function. Did the function affect val 0? That's what we're testing on line 16. And if the diagram is correct, this test case should pass because it's the value that was changed, assuming we go to the diagram and assuming this was the value of val0, then it changed the val0 from local variable and not val0 from the test case, assuming this was the test case up here. Okay, that's what we're trying to prove. So we go to run. And we run it, and notice we are still good. So meaning the diagram is correct. Right? There's two different uh, val0 variables, which is good because we're like, oh, OK, so the diagram is good, and the book, this came straight from the chapter 5, right? So, But notice how like the diagram, and hopefully the test case now, now you have proof, like, oh, yeah, so they are different, right? So, questions? Uh, I know in C++ it can tell us, but I've never tried it in Python. Yeah, because in C++ you use a special uh, operator, and it'll tell you like, like which memory block it's using in memory. I'm not, I'm not sure. I mean, I guess Python might have it, but I've never uh, looked at that. So questions here? Right here, like this is a moment from, you know, you understand this, like it's easy from here on on. Well, if you don't understand. Then ask questions, <laughs> right? Ask questions. Like what, like what is confusing you? So, um, should we, uh, so this piece is, actually this piece is not in the diagram, right? Five and six, we were just returning values. Should we, should we diagram this one with the test case? And you think that might make sense? Who's completely lost? Or who's kind of like, who's completely lost? Dave? Well, I didn't see that. You did that logic before. You know, on the test case. Okay, over here. So, assuming, let's try to map this to our diagram, right? So, assuming this is main, but I know, I know it's named local variable, but I don't want to, I don't want to draw again, right? Because <laughs> it takes a while, right? So, assuming this is main, so then we go here, and we're like, oh, okay, so, so this is main, so we have val zero, okay? There's uh val zero okay and then we call local variable with actually this one should be uh val zero here okay but it, it'll still like it'll still pass if we run it it should still not affect it right no this is still okay so now we go back to the test case and we're like okay so now i'm calling local variable with val zero so if we go here I call local variable with val0, and notice val0 is in a different block of memory. So when I set it to 100, I was actually changing a copy and not the original, which is this one right here. So that's why the test case is checking, is val0 still 0? And we're like checking here. 
and it is still zero because we modified a copy and hopefully the, the picture explains it. Why is it a copy? This is temporarily in memory while local variable executes. Once, once it gets to line 16, local variable is no longer in memory anymore. It's, it's freed that memory for our program to use for other stuff. You know, and it'll probably use it for self.assert equal zero value 10, right? That'll be loaded onto that memory region. So even if we tried to go get this variable here, even if we tried to go get this one, we can't anymore. Like it's gone from memory. So hopefully, like, um, that gives you a understanding of what happens when functions run, programs run. I'll watch the video again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, uh, well, I mean, I could tell you they're different, and then you take my word for it. <laughs> but, you know, but I feel that if, if I, like, at least give you, like, of what's going on in memory, then, you know, maybe it doesn't sink, sink in right away, but with time it's kind of like, oh. Yeah. Uh, but also, I think I read that you can't, like here in Maine, you can't access it. Uh, it's, I know we're using everything without zero, but it's like once it goes into that function, uh, you can't you can't try to extract it. If there was a variable in there that would say different, mm -hmm. right? You can, yeah. Like everything's just kind of isolated and running by itself. Right? Yeah. So so Dave's so Dave's asking, can from here from Maine? <clears throat> How can we go into local variable and retrieve like val? We, yeah. Yeah, no, no, without returning it, just reference it. Yeah. Yeah, you can't do that. You right? can't you can't do that. And actually return like local variable dot with variable name or anything like that. No, you you can't do that only like with classes. Oh, yeah. okay. mm -hmm. But now with function. Yeah, so, and actually the return value, since uh, we're here, it returns a copy. So in the local variable region, there's a, uh, there's a special block for return value. And there will also be a memory block for the return value. And a copy of that is sent to main, and then main gets that copy and puts it into wherever we assign it in main. Like for example, here we have a. Uh, actually, that that'll be the next test case, right? Because we're not using the return value. So now we can. Uh, here. Here we used it, but here we didn't. So maybe here we can capture it. Uh, we can create uh, val equals, right? So we capture the return value. And then what will be the value of that one? Who can tell me? Okay. So we send in zero, right? Uh, so I don't remember. <laughs> So we send in zero, local variable value is zero. So we're here and it finds our function. So this guy, you're zero. So we're like, hey, val zero, copy to val one. So zero is into val. Uh, val zero, now you're 100. Return val. So what will our value be? What's the value of val? Zero. Zero. So we go back over here. So then this will be zero. And well, let's see, right? So let's run it. So it's still zero. Why can't we get 100? Well, because we're not returning val zero, right? We're not. We're, this was just to show you that we can't affect a variable that exists in a different region or scope. We can't. And Dave's asking, well, can we go in and? in and get the variable reference it and modify it no we can't yeah so he wants to do the opposite 
like can can we like from here somehow go into local variable and affect or use it? No, we can't. No, it can't be. And I think uh, to show what Dave is asking, we can go into the function and we can say uh, val2 equal 10. Okay, val2 equal 10. This one exists in here. So we go back to our test case and we're like, okay, so I ran it. So can I say uh, self.assert equal uh, val2. And notice it doesn't know what val2 is, even though like, like if we're thinking logically, we're like, well, I mean, I call that local variable function and in there I created a val2 variable, actually it's 10. But test local variable scope function has no idea what's in local variable. So I think that's what you were asking, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah we, we can't we can't yeah we can't uh, we can't use it we can't go in there and magically like use it it can and hopefully the diagram explains why because by the time we get here to 16 it's gone from memory I mean there's no way we can go and use it so And that was local variable scope. Right? I think I think that's very important to understand how local variables and uh, function parameters are in memory and why. And hopefully you remember this when you're writing the program and you won't be like, ah, why doesn't it work? Right? Any other questions? In, in C++, there is a way to reference the variable, but not to use it outside here, but to like modify this variable, this variable's value, line 14, in a function. When you get to that uh, programming tool, they'll show you that. Okay. So I think we, we're done with local variables like and parameters, how they're loaded onto memory, and also like how functions, right? Like, did you all ever think like how programs are loaded onto memory? Right. So that's a computer science piece of this course. Like, like teach you how to program, but then also teach you how, at a high level, how they're working in memory. If you're in the computer science track, you need to take the computer organization and assembly language course. They'll go deeper and like actually show you like about the binary stuff that's going on and the and where are variables stored in uh, registers. So you they'll go like deep into this stuff. Like here I'm going high level. And if, when you're in that class you'll be like, Oh yeah, he was going high level. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let me see here agenda. So we I think we covered any questions on local variables and uh, function arguments. We're good there? Okay, so uh, global variables, right, which they exist in programming languages, but mostly everyone strongly uh, uh, advises don't use them like and if you like in C++, if you use them, we have uh, we can make them read only. But in Python, you're just kind of like following the honor system that if you see a variable in caps, in all caps, that means it's a global variable and you shouldn't modify it. But you know we're humans and somebody will eventually modify it. So we'll still cover it, but. Uh, try to stay away from them as much as possible. Like candidates for for global variables, like a tax rate, federal income tax rate, uh, what else? Payroll tax rate, sales tax rate, something like that. That values that don't change frequently. 
um, are good candidates for global variables. But uh, in all my uh, years of programming, usually those values are stored in a database and then they're read into memory. So usually, like I think mostly all the programs that I've ever been involved with, they stay away from global variables because they can, they can cause you a lot of headaches. Because right? imagine there's a variable here and like 20 functions, like any of those functions could, could modify it. So. Okay, so let's see. Uh, let's see what the book tells us about this stuff because I had some examples, but I think I forgot them, but we'll go to the textbook and we'll <clears throat> look at that section. And read now. Do you all try to read the book? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It will help, at least with the concepts, right? Like to more or less get an idea of what we're going to cover. I tried reading it before the class, at, you know, and I was like, it was really hard to get through, but now that I'm in the class, it's like, it's a really quick read. Okay. That's good. Okay, so global variables. Here we go. <clears throat> okay, so we'll go into main so so then this qualifies as global apparently right so let, let me see here global one dot py uh, outside the function notice the key thing here what is the key thing on line six to understand it, it doesn't have a parameter right so we declare my value here <clears throat> and then we call show value I mean we create show value but there's no parameter here and then we use my value yes mm -hmm. yeah If two of them are named my value, well, if we create two global variables with the same name, it'll create it the first. Okay. Well, it'll go by name. So if we have my value and my value one, then it'll use my value. But if we have my value one here, then I'll use my value one. Yeah. So let's uh, do this. Okay, so let me, well, I can't change that one. <clears throat> I wanted to test your question, Lee. I want, I'm curious now, so I want to see if it, migrate like across modules. I think it should. So we'll say uh, use global and then we'll say uh, print uh, print uh, val zero doesn't recognize it. So they don't transcend over. So then that means I have to create this one in here. In, Maybe I don't want to mess up my other one, so I'll say val3, and then here I'll say val3. So notice now, like, it, it recognizes that. Okay, so what's happening? Okay, so my function starts running, and print val3 is being executed, and then Python looks for a variable within the function first. And if it doesn't find it, then it goes outside and uses it if it finds one, right? In this case, it found it. So, well, let's see if that's the case. So we go here. So we say value return uh, use global. Okay. 
and we should be able to run this. Let me clear. Zero. Was it zero or three? I don't even know what value I gave it. Zero. Okay, let's give it some other value of 10. Okay, so let's run it. So if we go to the diagram that we have, uh, local variables, then it's somewhere in that region where global variables are stored. And that that's why our function can go and, and it's like, uh, I don't have val3 here. And then it goes and it's like, oh, val3 is over here. And then it prints that value. Oh, you're saying it can do it because it's a global variable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which doesn't have a capitalized. Uh, I thought you were saying. No. Well, that's the convention, right? So, so I didn't follow the convention, but yeah, they should be. Which is the thing that Python doesn't really have global variables. I mean, it has global variables, but not read only. We can make we we can modify them. And other developers, if they see caps, then they're supposed to honor that they're not supposed to change that value. But we, I mean, we're humans. Like somebody's gonna be like, oh, I'm gonna change it. See what happens. So now, why don't we create? Uh, val3 here and give it value 5 and then well let's see what happens but will it uh okay so my question is will it create a local variable or will it use the global variable Okay, so how do we test this? I think we have to do a print out here, right? Val3, there, I think that should work. Okay, so what are we trying to do? Well, that's okay, like, this is why we're here, right? To learn, right? And it's always better to voice what you think is happening if it's wrong, so what, you know, like, now you're like, oh, okay, so now. So now this goes back to his question. We had a local variable with the same name as a global variable. Oh, that's what he asked? That's what he was oh, asking. I'm sorry. I thought he said two global variables. Sorry. Okay. So uh, well, let's see what happens here. Right, so uh, run. So we have... Uh, Okay, so let's see what happened. Did we call the use global? Uh, let me see here. Uh, use global. Let me clear the screen because, oops, not like <laughs> or that. Clear. Okay, let's run it. See what happens. Okay, so ten and five, right? So. Let's see what happens. So val3 equals 5. So did this one execute first? I think this one executed first. And, and there's one easy way to did, check that. Did it execute because you imported it at the top of the page in main? Yeah. It executes right away. Yeah. Okay, so this is going to be like to help us, right? Because so it's, so least correct. So as soon as this one is imported, it scans our file and it's like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna print something right for you. So let's go ahead and yeah. So it so it print it prints this statement, and then once the function is executed, it does this one. So how? Still not helping us, right? Because. So now you should be able to go to the main and just print the 
So we go here. And but will it know what Val3 is? Magically, it does. Oh, wow, it imported it. Thank you. OK, so let's see. Run. Uh, am I? In? I get that error oh. every time it's self imports. <coughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, we have to. We have to do uh, value. I think we can do this value val3. Okay, I think this will work. Let me clear the screen. We're here till 50, right? 50? Okay. Okay, so global call 10, 5, 10. <laughs> so yeah. So if we go and look at the diagram, it creates a global val3, but in the function it creates another val3. So we go back here. So this is a function variable. What if we want to use a global variable in the function? Yep. Use uh, what's the syntax? Use global or global? Let me see. Global number, right? Like this. Okay. So let's see. So we're like, okay, we used it, so now we're like global. I'm not sure if we're gonna confuse the program or not. Oh, I see. Yeah, we're gonna confuse it because there's already a val three. So then we need to mute this one, and now we're like, okay, global val three. And we we can use it now, and now we can uh, modify it. So if we modify it here, we say val3. Now we're modifying the global, I'll say 100. So the last print statement, this one, should be 100, if this works, right? So let's see. Yep. So it didn't create a local variable because Python would get confused. It's kind of like, uh, I don't know how to distinguish between. That's why I had to mute this here or comment it out. Yeah, what does it do there? It throws an error? Yeah, it was, it was telling me, like, uh, what are you trying to do? You see? Because it's like, oh, val3 is here. And you, so. So as long as they're separate, you can do it. Mm -hmm. you can between. Yeah. The key thing here was to distinguish between a global variable and a local variable. So if we do not use the keyboard, the keyboard, the keyword global, like we did here on line 16, it creates a local function variable. But if we use global here, then it just references the global memory and uses the same variable that already exists. <coughs> Yeah. Any questions? I think we stop here, no? Oh no. Oh, I think we. It's local. Remember, like it scans for lo for local variable first, and uses it. And if not, then yeah. Mm -hmm. No, like, okay, say again. Yeah. Yeah. But if we want to modify the value, we have to do this. If we want to just use it, like with print here, oops, that's not going to work. Or like here, then it's okay, it finds it. No, it but if if I I don't know rules of programming, but if I say val three equals five, notice and it's dimmed, meaning you're not using this variable because it's now thinking that we wanted to create a new local variable. So I won't try to trick you like uh, like with assignments or anything like that. And 
for the exam, like I'll just ask you how global variables work, but um, I usually don't try, I mean, because it's kind of like really like trade tricks. That means you have to memorize all the different ways you can use it, right? So, yep. so if there's no questions, no other questions, that's all I got. Who stopped? Oh, did not record? Oh, man, that's not good. And this was a good. Ah. I was recording, more or less. Okay, thankfully. I was already going to kick myself.